What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I got some good information for everybody that's having a problem with their bench press lockout. There's a few key things that you can do, and there's a couple exercises that you literally should not ignore, and we'll run them all down. So, say you're coming off your chest, and then you go like that, and you say your pec flexes. You want to eliminate that. If you're going for max bench press, you're to be strong, not to have a big chest. If you're going for a powerlifting bench press, your first movement, if your pecs flex like that, you want to eliminate that. So you have to learn how to use your triceps. So what you want to do is you want, when you come off your chest, you want your, your pec not to flex like this. You don't want to, you don't want that. You want that right there. You want your tricep to engage first. So you grab the bar, you're underneath it, and when it's time to go, you want that. You want that movement. You want your tricep to engage first. The way you can do this is you need to learn how to activate that muscle first, and that's through practice and setup. If you watch my setup video, it'll actually teach you a proper way to set up on a bench. And you'll take 90% of your chest and pack out. You'll utilize upper back. And I cannot stress this enough. You can never have too much upper back or too much tricep. It's That would be a ridiculous thing to say. Because... When it comes down to it, you shrug your shoulders, you drop your shoulders down into the bench like that. So a lot of people just shrug their shoulders, then grab the bar and come out. That's fine. If you really want to do it properly, and I learned this from Ryan Keneally, is that you when you pinch your shoulders together, you drop them down. So now you take all this front delt, and all this upper chest out of the movement. Then when you grab the bar and you got it out, 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 when it's time to go, you flex that muscle first. You watch my setup video. It'll teach you a proper way to set up so your eyes are in line with the bar. And then you fire your triceps first. So practice that technique. Now, the exercises to get your triceps to fire, to actually lock out, there is a muscle, everyone knows you have the far side of your, well, the front side of your tricep, and you've got the long tricep that actually comes off your back and goes all the way down here. That's, the, that's what we want to strengthen. And then what ha ends up happening is you get a tricep muscle right here that normal people don't have. So you get a little ball right there. So right in here, you'll get a little ball next to your elbow. How to get that ball, because that's your lockout power. Everything in your tricep is your lockout power, but the long head that comes off your back, so that's why you need big upper back, and it runs down your arm, and then right into here, this little indent that I have going out. To get that so you get proper lockout, I would do incline rolling dumbbells, as seen in this video right here. And on top of that, I'm a big fan of tape presses. And I always do these on a, a semi-incline or a full incline, as seen in this video right here. Them two exercises are absolutely fantastic for working that lockout. And I also recommend doing some type of extension. Now... I always use a straight bar when I bench. When it comes to my assistance, I try to eliminate the straight bar exercises for triceps because two things working together, if you are real strong on your right, but your left is underdeveloped in strength and in size, you 
can compensate for it. You don't know you're doing it, but you'll wake up and you'll be like, wow, my right triceps like fires. Just sore as hell. And then your left one is not so much. That's why I like doing independent dumbbell movements for the bulk of my assistance is because it will overcome the imbalances that you have. One might move or fire faster, but over time, you're always going to have one side that's a little bit stronger. But if you use independent dumbbells and you're doing tape presses or roll them downs, so you can do roll them downs on the floor, you tape presses off the floor, you can do an incline, you can actually use a barbell, which I used to do a lot, but for me, it just really didn't carry over. I would do a dead stop press behind my head, roll it out, roll it back in, and then tr and press it up, right? So you go, you let the weight hit the ground, bang, roll it away from you and roll it in. And as it's coming in, get it up. And that little bump right there is what you want to try and utilize to get your lockout power. So the two exercises that flashed across this video, tape press and uh, rolling dumbbells, them are great. I recommend two to four sets and the rep range between 20 and 40 reps and the whole thing is you don't use a lot of weight you use you don't use something like five pounds right if you're if your best dumbbell bench press is say 50 pounds for three sets of 10 and that's like your all-time best then you would take like 15s or 20s and then you would do your rolls and then now when you go to a tape press, that's more of a static hold. So you might have to knock it down to a 15. But you want to keep it in the range where it actually makes you work. And they'll light your triceps on fire. Them are two great things. I also like doing overhead rope and pull the rope apart at the end. As you see in this video right here. absolutely great i love anything overhead for me i get a lot of carryover and all the people i work with get a lot of carryover and then the one thing that i just started doing a couple weeks ago and i kept it in because i always like experiment on myself a little bit right and i'm just not gonna tell someone hey do this it works 100 percent. i feel that if i do this exercise right here and do it correctly check it out What that is, is it's a one-armed rope extension, but I'm going across my body. So what I'm doing is I'm coming down and going out. So it's kind of simulating a tricep kickback, but I'm standing straight up and I go like straight out and up. So like a, a hammer curl goes like this. You just take a hammer curl, so you're at 90 degrees, rotate that shoulder in now this takes everything just takes your shoulder your pack and even your real delt out of this exercise and you take that rope and you extend it away from you and you come back up slow and controlled and extend it away from you same thing with the right hand just away from you away from you you actually do a little bit on an angle so you get like a maybe like your you're tucked on the bench, you can go there, but strict, strict form. That right there has put a good 10 pounds on my bench press in the last three weeks. Uh, it, it's really strengthened my triceps. And like everything else, it's going to fall off after a certain amount of time. But the rep range and set range for that, I would do anywhere between two to four sets again between 20 to 50 reps everything everybody thinks i put it this way everybody thinks that you need everything needs to be heavy to get strong if a muscle group gets bigger and can handle a lot of volume it's going to increase your strength in that in in the movement so if you're doing a bench press and you get 
big triceps with lots of volume on them. You get decent sized big shoulders with lots of volume on them. Your upper back and your middle back, the thicker it gets, the more spring you get off it. All these are supplemental exercises like this upper back exercise right here. Check this out. That's one of my all-time favorites for dumbbells. And I do it inside a preacher curl rack for one reason. Because it's a small space, so I have to go palms in, up, and I rotate, and then go back to palms in so it'll fit in between there. You could do that just by placing your head on anything, but the preacher curl rack actually keeps me honest. And the, and the same thing, um, set range, two to four sets, and reps, 20 to 40 reps, um, moderate weight. The more volume and the more mass you can pack on an area that's weak or underdeveloped, the more it's going to carry over to the actual compound movement. So that's what I do. If you're sticking with lockout, you need to tape yourself from the side. And you can actually see where you're sticking. If you're sticking two and a half inches off your chest and then blows right to lockout, then your two board, what I would say a two board, would be weak. If you don't have access to boards, if your gym doesn't have access to boards, but you've got a power rack, lay on it, gauge right where your, your sticking point is, and set the pins and do pin presses. And it doesn't have to be super heavy. We just need a lot of volume. And I'm close grip. Index finger on the smooth and push it straight up. Boom, let it rest. Straight up. Boom on the pins, let it rest. You can do that. I wouldn't just work the two board. I would work the three board. I would work a four board. I also would work a five board because you don't want to have a great two board and now you're shooting off, say, your best bench is 315 and it just shoots off and locks out. Everything's great all the way through. If you're in that position where it's slow off your chest, that boom locks out. If you're sticking around that two board and you work that two board and now you're like, it's smooth all the way through. Now you take say 325 to 330. You still are going to have a little bit of a stick at the two and a half board point. So what I would do is I would do everything in three week waves. To improve a bench press lockout, I would start with a low pin press, four to five sets of 15 to 20 reps, and then do tape presses, roll them downs, floor presses for reps, close grip, and then the second week I would come in, I would do a three board. So I measure six inches off my chest and I literally would bring a measuring tape and just grab somebody and say, hey, I'm going to lay down, get set up, measure six inches. They measure six inches, you kind of got a gauge, you know where to put the pin, set the pins if you don't have boards and pin press them there. Next week, go 12 inches. After that, go 18 inches. After that, go 24 and 32 inches. So it's the very very top of your bench and all you do is you, you get set up and pop 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 you're, you're just moving that you're just moving that muscle right there that's it so i hope you enjoyed the video you can keep referencing back go back to my setup video i appreciate every single one of you please like subscribe and share remember our model stronger every week sew thank you very much